Hey there tech enthusiasts. This is Saptarshi, and welcome to another exciting video on the Tech Think Tank, where we help you explore the latest and greatest in the world of technology. Today we will be focusing on building web applications with Java Spring Boot. In this video, we will take you through the entire process of building a web application using Spring Boot, from setting up your development environment to deploying your application to a web server. We will guide you through each step, explaining the concepts and best practices along the way, so that you can follow along and build your own web application with confidence. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to use Spring Boot to build robust and scalable web applications, and you will be ready to take your Java programming skills to the next level. So grab your favorite IDE and let's get started building some awesome web applications. Java Spring Boot is an open-source Java framework that provides a comprehensive platform for building web applications. It is built on top of the Spring Framework, which is a popular Java framework for building enterprise-grade applications. Spring Boot provides a simplified configuration and setup process for Spring-based applications, making it easier to build and deploy web applications quickly. It includes a variety of pre-configured settings and features, such as embedded web servers, security, and database integration, which can be easily customized and extended to suit the needs of a specific application. One of the key benefits of Spring Boot is that it allows developers to focus on writing business logic and application features, rather than spending time on configuration and setup. It also provides a flexible and modular architecture, which makes it easy to add new features or modify existing ones as the application evolves. Overall, Java Spring Boot is a powerful and flexible framework that enables developers to build high-quality web applications quickly and efficiently. Some of the key benefits of Java Spring Boot for web development include 1. Rapid development. Spring Boot comes with many pre-built components, such as starter templates, that can help you quickly build and deploy web applications. This can save a lot of time and effort compared to building everything from scratch. 2. Easy configuration. Spring Boot has a powerful auto-configuration feature that can automatically configure many aspects of your application based on the dependencies you have added. This reduces the amount of configuration work you need to do manually. 3. Simplified dependency management. With Spring Boot, you can easily manage dependencies for your application using Maven or Gradle. This makes it easier to keep your dependencies up to date and to add new dependencies when you need them. 4. Built-in security features. Spring Boot comes with many built-in security features that can help you secure your web application. For example, you can easily configure user authentication and authorization, and Spring Boot provides protection against common security threats such as cross-site scripting, XSS, and cross-site request forgery, CSRF. 5. Microservices Architecture Support Spring Boot is well-suited for building microservices-based architectures. It provides many features, such as Spring Cloud, that make it easy to build, deploy, and manage microservices-based applications. If you want to know more about microservices, click the pop-up banner now or the link in the description below. I can wait while you watch the microservices video. Overall, Java Spring Boot provides a robust, scalable, and flexible framework for building web applications, making it a popular choice for many developers. We will cover these topics in our video as we go along. 1. Setting up the development environment. 2. Creating a new Spring Boot project. 3. Setting up the database. 4. Building the web application. 5. Adding functionality with Spring Boot libraries. 6. Testing and debugging the web application. 7. Deploying the web application. To learn more about these topics, stay tuned to the end of the video. Let's begin our journey by setting up the development environment first. To do that we need to know the two most important things. 1. Downloading and installing Java Spring Boot. And 2. Choosing and setting up an integrated development environment, IDE. I'll now walk you through these two points in detail. Now let's focus on how to download and install Java Spring Boot. 1. Go to the Spring Boot website at https colon slash slash spring.io slash projects slash spring dash boot. I'll put the link in the description box for you to copy. 2. Click on the Get Started button in the top right corner of the page. Or on the link flashing now. Scroll down to the Installing Spring Boot section and choose your preferred installation method. There are two main options. Using a build tool, Maven or Gradle if you are using a build tool such as Maven or Gradle, 
You can add the Spring Boot dependencies to your project's configuration file, pom.xml or build.gradle. Using a command line tool, Spring CLI if you prefer to use a command line tool, you can download and install the Spring CLI, which provides a command line interface for creating and managing Spring Boot projects. 3. Follow the instructions for your chosen installation method. If you are using a build tool, you will need to add the Spring Boot dependencies to your project configuration file. If you are using the Spring CLI, you will need to download and install the tool and then use it to create and manage Spring Boot projects. Once you have installed Spring Boot, you can start using it to build your web applications. As we have successfully installed Java Spring Boot. Now let us choose and set up an integrated development environment, IDE, for Java Spring Boot development. 1. Choose an IDE. There are several IDEs available for Java Spring Boot development, including Eclipse, IntelliJ IDEA, and NetBeans. Choose the one that you are most comfortable with or that best fits your needs. 2. Download and install the IDE. Go to the website of your chosen IDE and download the installation file for your operating system. Follow the installation instructions to install the IDE on your computer. 3. Install the Spring Boot plugin. Most IDEs have a plugin for Spring Boot development that provides additional features and tools for working with Spring Boot. Search for and install the Spring Boot plugin for your IDE. 4. Create a new Spring Boot project. Once you have installed the IDE and the Spring Boot plugin, you can create a new Spring Boot project. Most IDEs have a wizard or template that you can use to create a new Spring Boot project. 5. Configure the project settings. When creating a new Spring Boot project, you will need to configure various settings such as the project name, package name, and project location. Follow the prompts to configure these settings. 6. Add dependencies. You can add Spring Boot dependencies to your project using your IDE's build tool or by manually adding them to your project configuration file. Add the dependencies that you need for your project. 7. Start coding. With your IDE and project setup, you can start coding your Java Spring Boot web application. That's it. By following these steps, you can set up your IDE for Java Spring Boot development and start building your web applications. Our next topic is to create a new Spring Boot project. It consists of two subtasks. Create a new project in the IDE. And, configuring the project settings. Let us dive deeper into these subtasks. Spring Boot supports multiple IDEs. Like Eclipse, IntelliJ IDEA, or NetBeans. We will discuss how to create a new Java Spring Boot project in all of these IDEs. Let us see how we create a new Java Spring Boot project in Eclipse. 1. Open Eclipse and select File, New, Other. 2. In the New dialog box, expand the Spring folder and select Spring Starter Project. 3. Click Next. 4. Enter a project name and select the options for your project. 5. Click Finish. Next, we have IntelliJ IDEA. Let us understand how to create a new Java Spring Boot project in IntelliJ IDEA. 1. Open IntelliJ IDEA and select File, New Project. 2. In the New Project dialog box, select Spring Initializer. 3. Click Next. 4. Enter a project name and select the options for your project. 5. Click Next. 6. Choose the dependencies you need for your project. 7. Click Next. 8. Choose the project location and click Finish. And lastly, we have NetBeans. Let us learn how to create a new Java Spring Boot project in NetBeans. 1. Open NetBeans and select File, New Project. 2. In the New Project dialog box, select Maven, Project from Archetype. 3. Click Next. 4. Select org.springframework.boot from the list of archetypes. 5. Enter a project name and click Finish. By following these simple guidelines, you can create a new Java Spring Boot project in your preferred IDE. Once you have created the project, you can start building your web application. Now that we have successfully created the project, let us learn how to configure the project settings. To configure the project settings for a Java Spring Boot project we have six tasks that need to be followed. 1. Project name and location. When creating a new Java Spring Boot project, you will need to give it a name and specify its location on your computer. 2. Java version. You should also configure the project to use the correct version of Java. 
Spring Boot typically requires Java 8 or later. 3. Build Tool You can use a build tool such as Maven or Gradle to manage dependencies, build and run the project. The build tool settings can be configured in the project configuration file, pom.xml for Maven or build.gradle for Gradle. 4. Web Server and Application Server Spring Boot includes an embedded Tomcat server by default, which is suitable for most web applications. You can also choose to use other web servers or application servers such as Jetty, Undertow, or Apache Tomcat. 5. Database If your application requires a database, you will need to configure the database connection and specify the database driver and connection details in the project configuration file. 6. Spring Boot Dependencies You can add Spring Boot Dependencies to your project in the project configuration file to access the Spring Boot functionality such as Spring MVC, Spring Data, and Spring Security. That's it. By following these steps, you can configure the project settings for your Java Spring Boot project and start building your web application. As we have already set up the development environment and created a new Spring Boot project. It's time for setting up the database. To successfully set up the database there are three subtasks that need to be followed. Choosing and installing a database management system, DBMS. Configuring the application to use the DBMS. Creating a database schema and tables. Choosing and installing a database management system is another important task. Here are the steps to choose and install a database for a Java Spring Boot project. 1. Choose a DBMS. There are several DBMS options available, including MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, MongoDB, and many others. Choose the DBMS that best fits your project's needs. 2. Download and install the DBMS. Go to the website of your chosen DBMS and download the installation file for your operating system. Follow the installation instructions to install the DBMS on your computer. 3. Create a new database. Once you have installed the DBMS, you can create a new database for your Java Spring Boot project. You can usually create a new database using a graphical user interface, GUI, or through command line tools. 4. Configure the database connection. In your Java Spring Boot project, you will need to configure the database connection. This involves specifying the database driver and connection details such as the database URL, username, and password. You can do this in the project configuration file, such as application.properties or application.yml, or through a GUI tool like dBeaver. 5. Test the connection. After configuring the database connection, you should test it to make sure that it works properly. You can do this by running your Spring Boot application and verifying that it can connect to the database. By following these five steps, you can choose and install a DBMS for your Java Spring Boot project and configure the database connection. This will enable you to store and retrieve data from your application's database. Once the database installation is done we need to configure a Java Spring Boot application to use the database. This can be achieved by following five simple steps. Let's discuss them in detail. 1. Add database dependencies. In the project configuration file, such as pom.xml for maven or build.gradle for gradle, add the database dependencies that correspond to the DBMS you have chosen. For example, if you are using MySQL, you would add the MySQL Connector Java dependency. 2. Configure the database connection. In the project configuration file, such as application.properties or application.yml, specify the database driver and connection details such as the database URL, username, and password. 3. Create database entities. In your Java code, define the database entities that correspond to the tables in your database. Use JPA annotations to specify the mapping between the entities and the database tables. 4. Define database repositories. In your Java code, define the database repositories that handle the CRUD, create, read, update, delete, operations for the database entities. Use Spring Data JPA to simplify the database access code. 5. Test the database access. Run your Spring Boot application and verify that it can connect to the database and perform database operations such as inserting, querying, updating, and deleting data. By following these five simple steps, you can configure your Java Spring Boot application to use a database and access data from it. This will enable you to build robust and scalable web applications that store and retrieve data from a reliable database system. It's now time for creating a database schema and tables for your Java Spring Boot application. 
It takes more time and effort to create the schema and create the tables than to install and configure the database. Fortunately, I'm here to help you understand all of them. Let's dive in. 1. Choose a database management system, DBMS Select a DBMS that is appropriate for your application's requirements. Popular options include MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, and MongoDB. 2. Install the DBMS, download and install the DBMS software on your computer. 3. Connect to the DBMS, use a database administration tool, such as MySQL Workbench or PG Admin, to connect to the DBMS and create a new database. You will need to provide a database name, username, and password. 4. Define the database schema. Decide on the structure of the database schema, including the tables, columns, and relationships between tables. You can use a tool like MySQL Workbench to visually design the schema. 5. Write SQL scripts. Use SQL commands to create the tables and columns defined in the schema. You can use the administration tool SQL Editor to write and execute these scripts. 6. Test the schema. Use the administration tool to verify that the schema was created successfully and that the tables and columns have the correct structure. 7. Map entities to tables. In your Java code, use JPA annotations to map Java classes to database tables. Each Java class should correspond to a database table, and each class member should correspond to a table column. 8. Generate tables. Use Spring Data JPA to generate the database tables based on the Java classes and annotations. When you run the application, Spring will automatically create the tables in the database. That's it. By following these steps, you can create a database schema and tables for your Java Spring Boot application. This will enable you to store and retrieve data from a structured database system. Till now we have learned about 1. Setting up the development environment. 2. Creating a new Spring Boot project. 3. Setting up the database. This video turned out to be much longer than I expected. Unfortunately, I have to make a part 2 of it so that all the information doesn't overwhelm you. Part 2 of this video will cover the remaining topics which are 4. Building the web application. 5. Adding functionality with Spring Boot libraries. 6. Testing and debugging the web application. 7. Deploying the web application. To watch the second part of this video, click the pop-up banner now or the link in the description below. Thanks for joining us today at the Tech Think Tank. I hope you learned something new and valuable about Java Spring Boot. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more informative content. See you in part 2 of this video. Until then, this is Saptarshi signing off. Stay curious and keep exploring the world of technology.